All right, everybody. It's the Jerry Metcalf podcast. We have a very serious guest today. His name is Jonathan Keith from South Florida and Fort Lauderdale with Team JK. They only sell in excess of 100 million, and we're looking at over 200 million this year. And he's coming on to share it with us. And there's so much more, by the way, top 100 agent in Florida, huge national recommendation, huge local leader. But I'll stop. JK. You need, you need like that set, that mixing board. Pew, 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 pew. Right, right. Exactly. I mean, but I, Jonathan Keith, when you Google him, Team JK on the Jerry Metcalf podcast, bring it on. Hey, it's so good to have you. Look, Salesforce, the ballers out there. You're on the number one podcast. Jerry is the infliction of sales infusion in the teams. By the way, he also was in the Breakthrough Luxury Coaching. So that's what we're talking about. Great. Oh, my God. She is crushing my agents. I love them. <laughs> we needed it. We needed it. They're all wondering what to do in 24. We don't We don't play nice, do we? Oh, oh I got to work. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. We could be nice, and then we're going to get out there and sell. Just saying. You know, oh, they're, all still living it. they're all still living the 21 life, the 2021 life. Right. Forget, forget hundred, forget 150 million. We're getting to 250, half a billion. Let's get real. Now, yeah. JK, let's give us you, we, and, and all of it, which I don't think you have any problem with the first time we met. I mean, it was like two best friends chatting about everything. Yeah, that was a sister from another could, mister. Right. Exactly. And now tell us, you've been selling it to give us like, give everybody why you got into real estate, how you started hitting it big. And then we're going to talk all about the lessons and the fun stuff, but give us kind of the pre, like what brought you here to where you are today, JK? You know what? I was appraising. I'll never forget. I was appraising um, back in 2001, 2002. Don't fall asleep because I got a bunch of pillows behind me. All right. And, and, and appraising made me fall asleep. And I think I was getting, you know, I think the uh, the appraiser I was working for at the time, the state appraiser, was giving me like $150, $200 in appraisal while I was watching all these realtors making, you know, just tons of money. And I just couldn't take it anymore. I couldn't take it. Got my The day I got my license, I never appraised again. Well, I mean, we do our own appraisals on our listings and all that, but um, an actual huge. Full yeah. appraisal report was, uh, that was done never again and man she was mad she couldn't believe it she you know what she told me she says jonathan i don't know if you paid attention in my appraisal class but the census bureau clearly states what the average realtor makes maybe you skipped that part of the class it's thirty thousand dollars i wish you the best at sales was that like your biggest motivator or oh yeah 100 percent Hundred percent. As a matter of fact, I had several people that in that time period, two thousand one, two thousand two, telling me, "JK, we give you six months, buddy, six months, and you'll be scrubbing for a Walmart job in no time." So, ninety five percent, right? Like we know the numbers. Well, first of all, it's about ninety five percent of agents that don't make it past year one, and right now, and maybe all of the time, it's 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 five percent of the agents do ninety five percent of the business. When you went in, having people tell you can't do it might have been a big driver to do it. What what really got you to do it, though? Like, walk us through how that all unfolded, what it was really like. You know, I spent, so guys, I spent, Jerry, I spent several years chasing buyers, wondering why I couldn't get inventory. That's what ate me alive. I mean, if you were to, if there was one thing, I know it vividly vividly about what my life was like in the 2003 to 2008 range there before the market tanked. And I think that the when it tanked, it actually did me a favor because I started realizing all the different brokerages that had the assets from the foreclosures and the short sales and all that. And I'm like, I got to have this inventory mm -hmm. and I'm done working with buyers. I can't. I just have zero tolerance for buyers. I had worn that out. I had burnt myself out with buyers, chasing them all over the place. And I'd wear them out. But but still, I, I knew that you know when it came to time, value, and money, listings was the place to be. 
And, you know, going into the short sale world was easy because you know, everybody needed help at that time. This is 2008, 2009, 2010. They all, they all needed help. And it was easy to go get a listing because it was like, listen, you're underwater. You might as well just give it to me so I can help you through the process. And I became a short sale king here in Fort Lauderdale in the Broward County area. Um, and I did a lot. I had a lot of bank representation as well. Through um, through multiple banks here, I was their go-to agent for uh, for their assets at hand, and um, and that really started the beginning of my listing capacity. And then from there, at, as we got into 2010, 11, 12, that's when I said, okay, we need to grow a team. I need to shift my buyers into the team, and I attack going into uh, full blown market share for the county. So I was realizing having market share of inventory inventory being listings is it and mm -hmm. man like let no good crisis go wasted that recession I hit <laughs> i remember that oh. i was doing land deals and i was like oh. i gotta get listings and yeah. i went into short sales yeah. what well, do you remember yeah. i don't know if you remember before that i heard about other agents mm -hmm. who did short sales i remember thinking like what's that i'm not doing that mm -hmm. next thing you know the recession hit and what was for two things when times get hard Right, like short sales was the way to go, and that and, and, and there weren't that many people who. We might be there again. Well, that's that what I'm saying. Right that's where I was. Right, that's where I'm going. Yep. So here yeah, we come into another tough time. You're talking about relevance. You're talking about relevance in a podcast, Jerry. Short sales might be back, brothers and sisters. Right, or and what's ironic though is what led to it last time is completely different from what's leading to it this time. Would you say? Like last time oh, was yeah. too many mortgages, not enough renters. There were there this time it's inflation. It's a whole different inflation it's a whole different situation. and laziness. I'm seeing a lot of lazy employees. Not real we'll we'll get to realtors later. Yeah. I'm talking about employees that have gotten into that little home office and they're like, Oh, it just feels good to stay in bed instead of working. Yeah, you because know, there are some that work better at the home office. And there are others that don't. And they've got themselves in a little pickle. And I ain't talking about pickle. Well, they're probably out wow. playing too much pickleball instead of working. And their jobs are on the lines and not focusing. And um, and they'll probably end up losing the opportunities. Well, here's in this 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 economy thing relates so directly, obviously, to real estate. Residential real estate leads the economy typically. You've got these guys, like if we look at the economy, what's happening to industries, what's happening to employees, there's, there's a lot of layers to it, what's happening with inflation. But at some point, there's always like the big, big losers and the big, big winners and the gap between those gets bigger and bigger. And as agents, where do we position ourselves? There. Right? Because yeah, there might be short sales, but there's a lot of cash out there right now too. Yeah, there's, there's multiple resources out there for short sale uh, negotiators so you want to have those at the at your fingertips i've got Get one that's it. just been waiting they've been waiting at the at the sidelines for this to pop and as soon as we start seeing short sales we're going to send them right over and have them start mitigating and uh and we're going to help our clients well, they're also this the is where we come in hand you know this is why we yeah. were essential in the state of florida um you know as realtors you know they we were we were we were we were designated as essential for the community and for the uh, for the overall state for work, because so they're all. Yes, they're also the. Um, we got to get through your whole story, but first, I just want to point out to everybody: I don't remember the name of the tools right now, but there are tools out there where you can identify when someone's missed two and three payments. That we were when I was using those, so that I could identify who might be a short sale candidate to get in front of those opportunities. To pick up the well, listings. They're, gonna to, they're gonna do a list pendants that so that's gonna come up, you know, yeah. um at a certain point. And then also you'll see uh, prospect now is pretty good at it. Prospect Prospectnow.com. Prospect now. Check out that check out that um that site. They're really good. All right now I want to get the rest of your story. Oh, oh. we gotta learn from we gotta learn from we can look well, up prospect. I'm gonna write, I'm gonna get I'm writing it down now so we have this link, but we gotta get JK while we've got him here because you're the man. Right, JK. So you get into short sales, then you get into inventory. 
we need music i'm gonna have to get a, i'm gonna have, we've got an editor but i'm gonna have to get an editor that adds music to the podcast okay. AK in the house there that's it in we know it's the secret get in front of bring the jk vibe and you're all good from there now here's where are we here's where i'm going with this so you get inventory you get in for short sales i mean what like that recession was the beginning of so many good things for me and obviously for you too like bad times yeah. make for good times what as you went through that you pick up inventory you pick up listings and then what happens next you grow a team what are the challenges what are the steps like get us to where you are today i mean building a team you always want to have a core foundation to admin you know you got to mitigate you know all that you know 10 and i call it 10 15 an hour work stuff you can't be doing that you, if you know that you have a history of getting business and doing sales, then that's what you need to stick to, right? So as an example, they look at me and they're like, JK, you cannot get involved in any minutia. You need to be, I'm, I've got ADD, you know, I've got hyperactivity, as you can tell. And so <laughs> oh, that that's all your secret sauce. <laughs> energy the energy people want to do business with people with energy nobody wants to do business with a lazy realtor there's already a ton of them out there too much competition or is it really competition exactly that's the problem though believe it or not you know some of the lazy realtors they engage their clients into being well i'm your friend and then we all know how that turns out and then here comes jk having to save the world for a big mess that the agent that doesn't do any business got themselves into you know well it was something you said is really important i always say people hire an agent for three reasons you only want to be hired for one of them being the cheapest being the least worst and being the best in the world and when you're the least worst you were the friend and when you were the friend everything that goes wrong is the reason they shouldn't have hired you and all of the eight to 20 people that go tell things about it does not work out well like it's like well, being a good person is like a way of life, not a business strategy. No, go ahead. I think there's a mirrored factor. I always like to look at things, um, kind of like do things, and I don't want to go religious or anything, but you want to look at things like Jesus would 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 Jesus do it, right? So no, don't 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 go there. Oh, you're, the this is good. This is good. Do as Everybody, Jesus. if so, you're not into Jesus, just he wasn't so bad. Just stay right, on. Right, right, right. Hear us out. <laughs> Hear us out. <laughs> right. We're not going to, we're not going to try to send you to church, but if you go there, we, that's pretty good. That's we're, good. We're, we're not, we're not, we're not doing the praise and we're not praying right now. Don't right? be this scared. Is, this is what I want you to right. taste though, right? Right. Would you hire you and why? Mm -hmm. Right. So the challenge we have with agents is they think they're amazing, but you can't even find them on Google. You can't even find them on Zillow. You can't even find any testimonials about any of the business. They're amazing, right? And I'll never forget this one thing an investor came to me and said, Jonathan, this was like early 2000s. Jonathan, I would work with you, but I don't work with average agents. Oh, that burned my ass. I was so pissed. How dare he consider me average? And I was doing great at that time. But I will tell you, if there was anything that had pivoted me to do better and push harder. It was that comment that I did not want to be considered average in my business because I know what average there comes with a cost with that. If he feels that way, God, who else feels that way? And I want to make sure I go above and beyond that. Huge. God, what a people, great story. People to go above and beyond expectations. And if you're in the business to just do whatever gets you by, I think you're probably in the wrong business. Or you'll just make whatever comes your way. Man, like, I don't hire average agents. Like, oh, it's like right. I'm going to plagiarize Seth Godin and He's got some good stuff and some not so good stuff, candidly. But here's one thing I love from Seth Godin. He says, being the best in the world is way underrated. 
Everybody's going to try to fix, trying to find the next trick, but how about if you just be the best? Now, what about if you choose the world you're going to be the best in so you can actually be the best? Well, and that's that's funny you say that. And, and you know, what is the best, right? Well, what is what what is that definition of a realtor being the best? You know, what I see, here's what I see, right? Being the best is knowing your market, right? Now, when we say know your market, it seems like out of the 20 realtors, 19 of them will go run off because they don't want to go dig and know their own market. So like as example, so I live in Sunrise Intercoastal, right? Don't you think you should know what price per square foot is running in here? Don't you think you should know what the days on market are? Don't you think you should know what properties are actually listed? Don't you think you should know what's closed in this past year? Don't you think you should the know what's week. being automated? Shouldn't your MLS automatically be set in your specific area? And shouldn't you be looking at it? When a listing pops up, so you know before your friends and neighbors ask you about the property, <laughs> none of this is happening. It's not and that's happening. not even hard to do. And it's all basically already paid. You paid know, all that money to be an agent, right? Like this, that's this what's... is where best. This is where best runs out. Now, what we do see, Jerry, is mm -hmm. you see agents that want to go out to the rotaries and they want to go out to the BNIs. And they want to go and do all these different groups and all these charities and all this, but they don't know shit about the market. And well, that's when it gets nasty. Actually, that's when it gets fabulous. How Because to exactly what you're saying is when you're the agent that knows the market, this is one thing that took me way too long to understand about real estate because it's really not very complicated. Going, you know, people say, I go to an event and there are agents everywhere. But guess what? The agents everywhere don't know the market. The agents everywhere yeah. want to be known, but they don't take the time to know who's in the room and know where they count most and know where the deals are that are right under their nose, right yeah, under their when nose. I, yeah, when I'm running around um, out there in the out there in the field and out in the different events, and like I've got a CCIM luncheon today, I guarantee CCIM you, CCIM is the bomb. By the way, that's yeah, like yeah, that's no, we've a, got a regional. We have a regional meeting are, over here. Um, explain over explain everybody. So explain everybody, CCIM is the commercial, it's a commercial designation. If you want to understand value, property values and get into commercial at all, yeah. CCIM.com. It is it's just to say, so yeah, I, you need to finish. We say that again, JK. Yeah, this is the substance of, of real estate. It's like getting your master's in real estate, right? So if you guys are serious about, you can still do residential and have your CCIM, but yeah, I love commercial. I love commercial real estate. I mean, if you ask me that, that's truly what I love. And I want to have the team. My goal is to have my team more focused on all the residential game that I've been running for the past 20 years as I continue chasing down commercial stuff. And, and I love it, it. Just that's what, you know, really like lights my heart up is getting into well, the commercial. Well, understanding residential and commercial was my biggest game changer before I before the recession because it was understanding, being able to assess and understand the value of real estate for, for your client, for the investors, for developments, for all of those things that we get into the longer and longer we're an agent. But you were going to tell yeah. us a story about going to the CCIM event um, oh, yeah. that so, I got all excited uh, about CCIM on. So you want to know these numbers. These guys are going to call yeah. me out on it because I got a few listings. And, and that's another thing, too. If you guys are going to events, if you're doing anything, make sure you speak out about all the inventory you have. I, I know several agents that I see on a regular basis. They never talk about their inventory, but I see it on social media. They hit the wall. I call them little wall heifers. They, hit, they go over to the wall <laughs> and uh, they don't talk about anything. I don't know what they're talking about. They're not talking Did about the inventory. Did you just say like the wall heifers? Yep. I love that. So you've got all this inventory. I remember being a new agent and I was, as I got inventory, I mean, I talked about it and put it out there because I thought that's what you were supposed to do. I thought that's what everybody did. I was getting listings because I was, people would say, Jerry, you, I want to list, I want an agent who promotes their listing. I want an agent who's going to promote hey, my house the way you promote your listings. That, but give us the wall heifer. You see that guy with a big bullhorn? Take a room with 30 people. And if you ran around, if you came in, what's your typical agent going to do? Your, your agent's going to come in, and you know what they're going to do? Your typical average agent. And I saw this the other day, actually. It was perfect. They walk in, and, and they see where the food is. They go and get the food, <laughs> right? And they sit down. Now, meanwhile, I know this agent has a brand new listing. I went over and called him out. I'm like, you don't want to go tell everybody about your listing? Oh, no, no, no. I, I'm hungry. Oh, Lord. You just sit right there. You sit, sit right there and eat your food. You know, I I think he even skipped 
lunch that day wow. because I had so many listeners I needed to talk about. Yeah. Th- I'm not there at the event to eat. I'm there to bullhorn all the stuff. I'll eat some nuts on exactly the way home. Maybe I'll, maybe, maybe I'll lose a little weight. You know what we all need? We just all need a dose of JK every morning. Oh man, I'm telling you. But you said some like earlier you said energy. Energy. Energy's everything. I'll say Jesus about Jesus. Just a little we didn't go into this about Jesus, oh, but yeah. You know, well, wait, 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 wait. Well, what were you gonna say? But I shouldn't have so you got well, first of all, you know, Miami, right? I'm in Fort Lauderdale, and there's a reason why I'm in Fort Lauderdale and not in Miami, okay? So just have fun, right? Yeah. Miami is ran off of that 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 espresso, right? That coquito, that co- cotado and all that. And uh, okay, when I had first had our baby, I knew I was kind of a sleepy guy, so I immediately went out and got an espresso machine. Every morning I wake up, I have an espresso, right? You want to look at what works for your body your mind and how you're able to come in and attack Mm. the day what is that some of you might be orange juice some of you might be a coke some of you might be um an orange or a or, or a banana or whatever that is whatever you can figure out that aligns you with having the best day me personally i wake up first thing i'm an espresso and i use those little those energy um it's not the energy, but the, it's the uh, the thing that fizzles in the water that, um, oh, shoot, I have to get it. Oh, the, um, I don't know. The emergency, the it emergency. sounds like, that sounds like, yeah, I don't yeah. think of you as an old man, but that sounds like old man drink chicken. No, it's an emergency. You ever see the emergency? Oh, that you emer- yes. I have vitamin I C. I use the emergencies. Yeah, the emergency vitamin C. So I have emergency I know, yeah, vitamin C. Yeah, that stuff is good. I've working. got it. Yep. Okay. Every day so I have one. Now. You know what that is all about? It's like there's this stuff we got to do every day for our business. We need to study the market. We need to get on the phone. We need to talk to people about what's going on. We need to get in front of properties. We need to get in front of people. And we need to see opportunities that other people aren't seeing. Now, before that, you just made, like, we talk about the breakthrough luxury, seven daily habits. First three habits are you. Take care of you. Get your mind right. Get your spirit right. And get your body. Get it going. Get it awake. Yep. And then go. Yeah. What do you think I yeah. was this morning? This Jesus thing, you bypassed it. Here's what I'm going to say about Jesus that I love. You know, I always think about like influence, right? You are a guy who's got, oh, Jesus, Jesus, I don't think Jesus minds. You're a guy who's got all of this influence. You've got your key influencers in your world. We all do. It's just whether we know or they're not. Jesus had 12. The whole world. There's not many people listening to this podcast or even out there that haven't heard of Jesus. 12. Now we can go into the one that went bad and all of that. But the point here is 12, like, like, what do you really need? You need right. a room, you need a brain, you need the energy and a few people. Oh yeah. No, we all have to be in alignment, you know? Yeah. Now you are, goals to achieve. you're really involved in the community. I mean, you are a giver like I have never seen. A lot of people come in and they're like, if I'm going to, I got to, you know, I got to, I've got to, you know, go get this in, like there's the competitive nature, but in the way that you do it, you get inventory, you go take what's yours. And but when you do it, you are so giving and generous, giving of energy, giving of resources to your team, giving of everything. But the, where I'm going with all of that, I just want to give you, you know, give you a little extra taste. Yeah, of there's there's a about. comment to that. I was you with it. You're creating relationships and they're key, but what were you going to say? Add to that. There's, there's a nature factor to it. And you look at like, you know, I remember growing into the business, you know, I told you guys I was in, in 2003, where we were on our own. We, we weren't sharing nothing. <laughs> we weren't giving anything away. You know, we had, if I was a Cobalt Banker and there was 50 agents in the office, we didn't talk to each other. Uh-uh. Wow. You know, nobody gave anything to anybody, right? Kind of ironic, yeah. And things have evolved with collaboration and um and and so I think that the nature in general is to, in my opinion, is not to engage. That's how I was brought up in the business, is not to get involved, right? I fight my own mindset to 
to stay clear, because I have 30 agents on the team, right, is to maintain that I'm only here to help. If you don't want my help, if you're not happy with the help I'm giving, we should loss, right? If And, and I want to stay and maintain wholeheartedness that the vibe that I'm giving is that you win, we win, right? Or I win, you win, right? And it's it's not a selfish, you get sales and my production goes up here. My production is going to go up either way. I'm going to get and attack this business on a consistent level like I've been doing for the past 20 years. But I want to inflict that into my agents and help them. And I think if you help people more, you're going to get more out of it. And I see a lot of top players that have done what they've done, accomplished what they've accomplished, and they're past all of the accolades, the, the getting of the accolades and all that. And now they focused on trying to make other people better and help them achieve more accomplishments of whether it's family or financial or emotional or whatever that is. And they're doing it. And I, that's where I'm trying to maintain. That's what I'm looking. That's what I'm chasing on a daily basis. Yeah. It's funny because it's when I first started really giving, I just really got joy out of it. And I thought, man, I really just want to put myself out of business. And what it did was that giving creates more conversations, more opportunities. Yeah. And with other agents, agents are going to co op with you that. because you're a big player. They're going to get the business yeah. because they partner with you. Other agents it's are going to bring you deals first. So, and, you, and you almost like wonder, you know, no good deed goes unpunished, right? And, you know, listen, I was counting up them deeds and the punishments <laughs> I've gotten the other day. It's like, how, how, how did, when you counted, how that was a lot to count. How'd it work out? You know what? Whatever that deed was, you chose to do the deed at that time. And whatever repayment or non payment you got is what it is. Next, move on. You got the enjoyment mm -hmm. of doing what you needed to do or what you wanted to do at that point. And whatever that individual chose to pay or take or non-pay is what it is. Yeah. Now you know who you're playing with. Sometimes Man. it takes a it sometimes it takes cost to find out. Man, there's that next. It's like I think about this is gonna sound so cliche of me, but I'm a as just a, I'm a terrible tennis player, but the one thing I know about tennis is you've got to move. You can't yeah. look, oh, yeah. you got it, you got in any sport, but you've well, got and, to yeah, keep moving forward. That. And I play yeah. tennis, so I, I play tennis on Tuesday. You're probably good Saturday. at it. Yeah, and no, I'm decent. I'm like a three five. I'm nothing crazy, right? I mean, I got guys beating up on me all the time, and I take it, I mean, but I, I invite them over to the pickleball court, and they get, they go, oh, no, no, we're not coming to the pickleball. I'm like, that's, <laughs> that's where you're going to get beaten, right? Yeah, you know, I'm real sensitive about my pickleball game. With tennis, I'll take, I'll, listen, I'm, I'm not great, but I play and I enjoy it, right? Um, but you know, Agassi, I read, and this is what's interesting about, you know, researching the business, you know, yeah. I was, wasn't doing well. I wanted to play tennis, but I wasn't doing well. I wanted to be a better player. I wanted to go from like a three, five to like a four. I don't know if it's ever going to happen, but I can tell you this. There are certain things that when you research and just like, as you're here on Jerry's podcast and Jerry and I are, you know, tug of war and pulling each other's hair. You're going to find that like Agassi was in a situation with, um, I think it was Sampras, where Sampras was just jamming on him on the serve. Like the serves were coming out, you know, 120, 130 miles an hour. And Agassi said, I didn't have any other thing to do but just breathe. And I'm telling you, the, the, the amount of research and the things I've done, whatever that rolled up to, there are certain things that you get out of reading that, and then at that point I had read, and that's affected how I play in both tennis, pickleball, and business, and even in relationships. When my wife and I scrap, I realize, hey, you know what? Let's take a break and we'll recircle. We're, we'll circle back when we're cool. Same thing with Agassi. He didn't, he was cornered. This guy was just absolutely slamming serves in his face. He couldn't even get to. And um, he said all he could do is breathe and create oxygen for his body into his kidneys and his lungs. And that was allowing him to maintain composure to get to where he was at. For at least bare minimum, he wasn't embarrassed on the tennis court. 
Now, who was he playing? Who was he playing again when that happened? I think it was Sampras. Pete Sampras. Sampras. I don't remember. Who's yeah, the Pete Sampras. Um, He's out of what? Pete Sampras lives over in Wesley Wesley Chapel over there in Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Um. So, did you did you read the book? Open his whole book. No. no. Agassiz's book is no. a great book. I just saw him actually a couple of weeks ago over at Hard Rock. He was there doing the pickleball. Shout out uh, to Agassi. That book yeah. is so good. That book is. Him and him and him and Steffi were there. Yeah, that book is. So, it tells. It's called Open, because obviously, yeah. like the Open, but it's also he says it's like, it's everything. It's great. What's funny is you know our business, Jerry, is really a it, it is a game. It truly is. It's how you play it. If you're showing up unprepared right you know you, you look at what just happened in the super bowl those guys they wanted it right do you want this business do you really really want listings are you really doing the things to deserve listings and are you competing are you if you find out that you're not getting the listings you should be getting then you should be competing to find out what's going on to level up the next the next position the next notch up to make sure you don't lose another opportunity that's how this goes you know when when tennis players as an example when they play and they lose guess what they do they stop playing or they actually start doing playing more tennis and they get a new coach or they change things up that's what yeah. needs to happen with you if you're not doing or getting where you need to go you got to change things up so you can start get and, and this market's changed right so all your agents between 2012 up to now have never seen this they've never seen this yeah they've never seen inflation like it is they've never seen insurance like, like it is they've never seen you know politics like it is they've never seen um you know all all the different challenges that have we're any of us ever seen politics like where it is just say we won't no, go into no. it we, we haven't we, ever we, seen we, this we're, we're already, we already slapped you with a Bible. We'll, we'll take, we'll pull that back. We're well, not going to well, go politics. Right. With you. We're just talking about right? Jesus. I mean, come on, yes. but it's relevant. Um, in <laughs> politics, is we won't get into politics. We'll try not to, but it is relevant because we've never seen anything like this. Yeah. Overall, though, I can tell you this: no matter what it is, no matter where we're at, wherever we end up going, whether it's biblical or political, <laughs> right? Yeah. It's still going to boil down to contact becomes contract and if you're not contacting you're not going to be contracting period well, and let's let's add to that the contact that you make is with energy it's knowing what you've got and sharing it showing up with it and showing up with the energy that is positive energy that gives a sense of contribution and reciprocity and receptivity yeah. there's a lot of deals out there waiting for people because the last thing on receptivity on that is you just said like i always like what are the questions we're asking ourselves one question i thought was really powerful or i know is that you said it landed hard for me was do you really want it do you yeah. really want it i mean i i get a lot of agents that come in and like jk i want it what what do you but then they then they, then they veer off into something else well, uh, wait. I, I, I wasn't feeling well, or, yeah, but but they have a consistency of not feeling well. I think you need to get your health right before you start considering real estate. What do you really want? There's another one. Yeah. yeah. Or, I mean, we see a lot of agents that come in and they're like, hey, I'm going to make six figures. I never I never see them make $10,000 worth of worth of duty, right? There's a duty to pay in this business to get to where you want to go. And if you don't have a lot of times, if you don't have non-negotiables, right? I had non-negotiables for years that specifically allotted out a lot of time for me to focus on seller directed business, right? Money making mm -hmm. business where I didn't get calls from any of my buddies. And if they called in, boom, straight to voicemail. And I would get the funky text. Yo, that's all I've got. That's all I'm worth. Yeah, we'll talk at 12. 
I and I even had friends who were like, I don't know if I'm I don't like being in this friend boat where you know you have me only when you want to have me and but but you only you get me anytime. I'm like, well, I can't help that you don't have your time associated to money making experiences or business. And then I've had other agents say, well, isn't that the friends that are referring you business? No, no, no. If we're not friends enough to already refer business in that situation, we don't need to be friends at all. You need to allot your time. And it needs to be associated to whatever your capacity is. And that doesn't mean you got to be Mr. or Mrs. Scholar. It doesn't mean you got to be Mr. or Mrs. Door Knocker. It doesn't mean you got to be Mr. or Mrs. Mailer. It doesn't mean you got to be Mr. or Mrs. Networker. But it means you need to pick one of them. Get at it. And pick what to be the best at non-negotiables. You said I've got non-negotiables. Non-negotiables is non-negotiables with what I'm going to do. Non-negotiables is what, like, talk to us a little bit about non-negotiables. Well, you know, well, my friends, they want to negotiate my time. They were all about negotiating my time because they just love hearing from me. Oh, yeah, JK, he's a whole lot of, he's a box of fun. Well, of course I'm a box of fun, right? I'm a box of fun, but also I have business to do and I need, I have contacts to make. I have 20 years and reverse. I don't need to go forward. Mm -hmm. Right. Those of you that have been in the business, I don't know why you're chasing new business. You just need to maintain what you've had, what you've done, what you've completed. And cultivate opportunities yeah. from what you've got. You need there is a plethora. A plethora. You know, you need to, I go back through right now. I guarantee you, all of you guys have pre-COVID relationships that you hadn't heard from. I just saw a couple of them on the tennis court the other day. I hadn't seen them in a while. So I'm like, damn, how how did I miss that? My CRM must so be off. True, isn't it? It's crazy. You know? That's actually I COVID see. is like, like you haven't talked to anybody. COVID's a COVID's your reason. Nothing else. Like now it's embarrassing. Now it's I will tell you, it's embarrassing yeah. too. Where if you had good relationships and you hadn't heard from them when you start calculating that you hadn't seen them since pre-COVID, I guess they weren't that important to you. You know, and so, trust you me. So, so right, but what do we do? I say call them. Right? They're thinking, they're thinking the same thing. They're thinking, they're thinking, I guess I wasn't important enough to, for Jonathan exactly. to, to check in on. Yeah. I wasn't on his COVID checklist. Somebody's got to make the call first. Let it be you. Yeah. And, you know, we're seeing as I'm getting out in the events and doing the different things on top of, you know, all the other things that we do, you know, you... Where is your energy? You know, I mean, I'm, I can't be more excited to be out and more excited to push forward. And, you know, especially with the business the way it is, what is your position right now when people ask you how the business is? Because the minute you tell them it's not good, you're fired. <laughs> and you're always being interviewed to press, press, go. You're always being interviewed. And when you tell people how bad yeah, it is, you just, you didn't get the job. You just fired yourself. There are jobs everywhere, receptivity, yeah. jobs everywhere, and you didn't get it. I, I think that you, you want to really look at that response because that's one of the biggest response that creates business, especially when you're out in the networking field. It seems like that's what a lot of the realtors want to do. They just want to go well, out and network. That you know? what, my, do you have a favorite response to that? But do you want... Who goes first? Do you want to talk about your favorite response to that? Even though well, I don't yeah, have no, a response to that. I don't do that yeah, anymore. But, say, yeah. well, we, we, the, right off the bat, you do a countdown. Listen, we've already had, um, I, I mean, we just knocked out 100 million over in 23, and we've already rolled over 10 million in inventory, and we're already getting offers uh, on, 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 on a good portion of that business. So we're fighting through it. We've, we've seen some bottom-feeding buyers. And you just give them a little real reality, but you gotta have something besides yeah. not good. Besides, well, uh, we're not doing that well, or the market sucks, or or inflation, or insurance. If you say insurance, you you're fired. Why? You just you just literally warn them that hey, maybe now is not the time to buy because insurance is high. Yeah, rather than be so, like people pay us for solutions when we're agents. You, right. What I love is you might be hearing all of these bad things. In the meantime, what we've done is found solutions. Last year yeah. we were exceeding a hundred million. This year we're we're on we're we're already on track to do double, and well in excess of two hundred million. Oh yeah. Our clients yeah. are coming to us because apparently we have the solutions, and 
whatever the right wording get, is for getting all the your you're getting all the gold nuggets over here between Jerry and JK. I know. Maybe we're going to edit that out. Keep that a secret. <laughs> all right. So I want to ask you a few more questions about your career so we can keep getting gold nuggets. And then we're going to go into the final three for this interview. So I know we both, especially you've got a schedule to, to meet today. But first, when you look at real estate, a few things. I'm going to go back just for a minute. Like the beginning, you came in 2001, 2002. It wasn't a great time in the economy and it was tough what is it and now you've come to this level that you're this huge producer what kept what kept you there's that time that we all go through as agents whether it's no matter how seasoned we are times get tough always that's part of the nature of this business what kept you consistent and on track to break through so many agents give up what kept you from doing that one word Next, I remember vividly, clearly going into fetal positions in 2003 and four as I was growing into the business, 2005. It took gut-wrenching punches in the kidneys, in the stomach. I've bled all over these streets, right? And what I've noticed is a lot of the agents, the new ones that come in, they don't want to do anything but just be hand fed. They don't want to bleed at all. And I, I can appreciate mitigating, you know, any kind of pain. And I, I understand that. But unfortunately, you don't get the lessons out there. So as an example, I'll bring in a, a $10,000 lease and put it, you know, out to the team. And you, you'll see some team agents scratching their head. They don't have a lot of business. And I scratch my head. I'm like, a, they probably never wrote a lease. B, they probably never worked with a tenant. C, I don't know if they even know what's out there in the market that would make any sense for them, but they should be out there. If you're, if you're a fresh agent out there, you need to get and take everything. So you're just get your butt out in the field. You know, in our county, there's 670,000 parcels. How many parcels are for sale or how many parcels could potentially be for sale in your county, right? Our county takes on $3 billion in taxable income, $270 billion in overall value in Broward County. It's 10% of the entire state of Florida, right? Do you know these facts? Are you dug in? Do you, do you know where everything is when it comes to the chamber and the courthouse and the, and all the different public facilities that you get. And then we tear down into the restaurants, the ones that are coming, the ones that are going. The biggest talk in town right now has been Park and Ocean that left, right? Everybody couldn't believe that they left. It was such an amazing place. And now the biggest talk after that is who's replacing them, right? And then who's the best Italian? Who's the best French? Who's the best uh, Spanish? Who's... Who's the best Cuban? Who's where do you go for Korean? Do you know these things? Right? Yeah. It, it, it's it's just knowing your community, knowing what's going. Do you know what's going on with the next event? Guess what I was ordering on my way in the golf cart to get on this call. Guess what I was ordering? A St. Patty's Day shirt because I want to have the fattest St. Patty's Day shirt you could possibly have when St. Patty's Day hits. I love it. Right? Are you prepared? Did you get your beads? People love getting beads. We're going to be in the parade. You know, why aren't you getting the parade? You know, I love it. What are you going to do to participate? The lack of participation was okay in COVID. It's mm. not okay in post-COVID. Right. Sorry. It's, it, it what, what, what do you mean? Sorry. What? No, don't be sorry. I feel bad, I feel bad no. when I get aggressive. No, it was all, oh no. We had kindred the spirits. I'm out. with you. I'm with you. Well, it's too, it's, it's, I love you. Said, there were so many things. I was like, oh, oh, that was so good. How you, the number of parcels in your county, like inventory, right? Like what's inventory? Is inventory what MLS decided inventory is or inventory is what's out there and you happen to know it better than anybody. Right. Get ahead. This isn't even like competition isn't about fighting. It's about getting ahead of it and owning it before anybody else knew it was there. 
Right. Well, and then and you it's start about building you go, what you build, you Steve, up, you, you and everybody else. You go into listing appointments and you start banging out what you know about the county. They start feeling a lot more comfortable if they're interviewing three and four other agents. You know, in Broward County, there's there's forty thousand agents, right? And there's exactly and there's two million people, right? So you do the math on percentages from realtor to population to number of so listings. Of competition. There's a lot more agents than even yeah. listings, and there's a lot there's there are always more listings than closings. There are always there are we always still have listings. Too many agents that don't want to do the standard work to know. You need to know the data. Get the data down. Just because you went and passed the test doesn't mean that you're data driven. But unfortunately, I've got bad news for you. The public's requiring it. Yeah. They are well, they're expecting you to know. And if you don't know, you're going to get caught with your pants down and you're not going to be hired for the job. Well, the thing about the data, too, is not only does it help you win the business, it helps you see the opportunities out there. If you've got the data, you 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 have the data to identify opportunities that you don't without it. Yeah. If you've got oh, the yeah. data well, and there's a and here's site, a great example. Here's you a great can example. find sites. and yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll give you I'll give you a great example. Right. So. I was showing a seven mil in Pompano, right? And uh, one of my listings buyer came in. And, What's under uh, contract now? The, the wife, the wife ran off. Yeah, right? did her thing. She ran off looking at the property, and the husband pulled me aside and started talking about cops. Right? He goes, "I don't, you know, we don't really know each other that well, Mr. Keith, but um, I was doing some homework. I think you're off on listing price. We're gonna <laughs> you, your fives, your fives." Right. I laughed so yes. we, yeah. we ended up negotiating, right? And then this thing, this comment, the, this commentary came out again. And they said, we, where we landed was in line with the actual comps because I went into county record, right? And there's a simple little tab that once you put the address in, you just hit 2003 sales. And the county record does a little grade slash area. Those of you in and Broward County will know what I'm talking about. And it shows you all the comps. And I was I was in on target by five thousand dollars on a seven wow. million dollar home. So dollars. And I told them, I've got three hundred more square feet for you. I have a more bedroom count and more bathroom count than the other comp. So yeah. this is what I'm arguing about. I'm expecting signature by the end of the day. And maybe we should go up on our price. <laughs> I love it. It's data and right where we're going, knowledge, character, edu what do they say? Character, competence, but it's knowing the market yeah. and the relationships and working with people. I was and, talking uh, about this the other day, yeah. Jerry. I was talking about this the other day. So we're building a house. Let's just say we're building a house. Your plumber comes out, right? And, you know, he's about eight years, but, you know, you know, he's a little cheap, you know, he's, you know, he's not, you know, there, but he, but he's cheaper than all your other plumbers. Right. And he's, you know, I mean, sometimes he does a little electrical, he, you know, he does a bunch of different stuff, but, you know, you really need him on this job. And then you start really paying attention to how he's acting on the job, how he's paying attention to the plans and start wondering whether he's really all put together. Right. If he's really got his shit together, don't you start wondering whether he's using glue in the seams? Yeah, he, details are he, everything. Yeah. Yeah. Because if if he starts laying pipe, you know, and he's not using the right glue, and he's not priming that, there's you're those gonna joints, question everything. You, you're going to have major. And you're problems. in trouble. You're in trouble. Public knows if you don't have your game put together, get your game together, people. Realtors, professionals. I love how you say it's a, it's, yeah, it's, it's the fun, this business, is it really that competitive? Nah. It's really Dude, not. What's so hard? I mean, you think of uh, another buddy of mine, uh, he owns a glass company. He Unless everybody to, listens to this and takes our advice, then it will be competitive. So tell us about one, your buddy. Man. Here's a buddy of mine that set me straight in the biz. Here's Jonathan. I own a commercial glass company. I've got to get nuts, bolts, screws, glass, frames, tools. 
I've got to get insurance for the truck. I've got to get insurance workman's comp for the guys. I got to worry about them getting sick. I got to take on all the, they take on all this responsibility, massive responsibility, warehouse, insurance for the warehouse, admin, all this stuff, right? And when he finally does, he gets a deposit from the owners, right? For half of whatever he's doing, right? And that's only covering the material. And well, guess what happens? Guess what happens to my buddy at the tail end of, of him finalizing the glass job? It's all done. And he's going to look for the check. They ain't paying. Now he's screwed all his time, all his energy, all his liability, all the things that he did are out the door. And you know what they do? They say, sue me. So now he's got to go get an attorney. Now he's got to go chase down all that monies, right? And guess what happens to the monies that's left over? The attorneys get it, and he gets maybe like a portion. So when it all boils down, after all that pain, after ordering silicone, ordering nuts, bolts, having to deal with the employees, giving them a hard time about getting this, having to deal with all the issues on the job site, right? He still is able to get to a point where he's making money, right? Yeah. We don't have to do any of that. What did you have to do today? You had to put gas in your car? You had to get on a Study Zoom? the market. Yeah, you, you had to start the market? There. Yeah. You, you had to memorize some things? You know, you had to dig in and figure out what's going on in your community and some events coming up? You had to order have a tough Patty's conversations? Yeah. You know, yeah. You had, you, had, you had to call up and maybe ask for a price adjustment? This cat's just, this, oh, I didn't even tell you about what else he was worried about. You know what else he's worried about? He has ten to $15,000 in payroll on a weekly basis. Yeah. Start stroking that. You know, it's painful. Our job's not that hard. That's all I'm it's saying. The, I'm gift, the, gift of, the gift of being a real estate agent is huge. And it goes back and I talk about, Everybody talks about the go-giver and about how it's about giving. I say, guess what? It's also about being able to receive the gifts you have, like the opportunity to have this career and to be an agent. And if, if it's not a gift for you, maybe get out. But what you explained was all of the gifts that we have in the business yeah. of being a real estate agent. Yeah. And, well, and I appreciate you putting in the check. I hope, I hope yeah. that came out clear on what I was. Yeah, it did for me. Yeah. 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 It's beautiful. And, and, but, and what's so funny though, Jerry, is that even after I lay that out, I wonder how many will actually say, you know what, JK is right. I need to put a little more time and doing research. So I know, you know, let's say Bobby out there lives in Tampa and he's over in Hyde Park. Bobby in Hyde Park should know every damn thing about Hyde Park there is to know, whether exactly. it's the movie theater getting shut down. The new grocery store coming in, the new products coming into the grocery store, the new baseball league coming in, the new school coming, whatever. Learn it. Whatever it is, the new barbecue place, you better know. Well, here's the thing. If you're listening to this show, you're probably, you either know it or you're researching it right now or you wouldn't be listening. So don't disappoint. <laughs> yeah. All right. Final three questions. Number one, if you had to say, if you had to narrow it down to one resource that has been the most powerful for your success, what is it? Hmm. The phone. Hmm. Was that too easy? I love it. Sometimes I'll go other than your phone, but I haven't had that one a long time. And that man, but, that's true. Isn't yeah, I it? I think about like, like over the year, over the years, right? Like I remember having my Blackberry on Snowmass Mountain. You're having a Blackberry. In 2006, having the best year I had ever, ever had. And I wasn't even here. I was on Snowmass. And I love that little Blackberry because I could just type away on it fast. Like, yeah. It would click. Remember when they, oh they were like, God. you have the iPhone, you can't, I was like, you can't even feel the buttons. Like, who's going to do right. that? Yeah, I couldn't do now. that. I couldn't do it. It took me a we while to transition from the Blackberry. Yeah, it took me a while to, 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 to transition. I was a late adapter too, but, but everybody, most saying, people listening to this might be going, what are y'all talking about? <laughs> well, what we're saying, well, and, and by the way, guys, if you want to see a really good movie or an interesting movie, check out RM, was it Research in Motion or whatever? 
Or I must have had a movie about it. It was really good. Check it out. No, 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 I don't. Research in Motion. Yeah. Is that the name of it? Yeah. Yeah. Research yep, yep. in Motion. Check out the Blackberry. Blackberries. Check out Blackberry. But it's, it's a movie. movie. It's called Blackberry. Okay. I don't think I've seen but, uh, it. But yeah, I'm you want to have the phone. So what we're seeing, I saw it the other day. We gave a million dollar lead out to one of our agents. And then I I took the time to circle back with them the next day. Have that lead go. I don't know. I'm waiting for an email to hear back from them. Whoa. Did you see me come through the screen? Holy shit. You better get her on the phone right now. See where she's at. See what she's want. And inflict the wrath of whatever she wants, million dollar related, right now. That's what we're missing, Jerry. And, and make all the... Right here, right now mentality. A sense of urgency. Right here, right there was now. A, there was a sense of urgency. There was a tire company, and I can't remember what I heard this story. It was like a Tony Robbins or somebody. And they were talking about how successful it was. And they said... They had they like it's like the Ritz Carlton, but this is just a tire company. Is they what are they, they had all these policies, and one of them was when somebody pulls their car up, if you work there, you run. It's not urgent, but you run to the car to meet them to give them that sense of you're important to me and yeah. I'm here for you. Yeah. And that was their policy. When somebody pulls up, you run to the car. I'll never forget this. It's so funny. I'll never forget this is good. And they were one of the and most they, successful, and that was why. Anyway, right. go ahead. Yes. I, I love it. I love it. No, I love it. You're on point there. I had an agent on the team, and her middle name was, I don't know. <laughs> well, I know what her middle name was. Well, but we haven't even different. talked about running her, teams her yet was, and navigating these things. Yeah. And she was she was a former bartender in a well known, well known um bar here in town. And anything that ever happened, I don't know, come out of her mouth. And I don't know about you, Jerry, but I, I have zero tolerance. She didn't sure. last long on the team, okay, I'm, I'm sure. No, 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 no. I remember when she had an option to either stay or go from one company to another. I said, hmm, I think where you're at is perfect. Bye. See you later. Bye. So, but I want to tell you this. I want to tell you this. She was known at this, well, I mean, gorgeous girl, knockout. And she was known as like one of the best bartenders there at this bar. And so I couldn't put two and two together because what really tripped me out is that when I was at the bar, I would go see her every once in a while. Some of my buddies, we'd go see her. And I'd order a drink and I'd see everybody else order different drinks. She never said, I don't know to them. She knew exactly what the recipes were. She knew them by heart knew exactly how to make their drinks. And they were the best drinks in town. But damn it, Jerry, when it came to real estate, everything that came out of her mouth, I don't know. And I just was not accepting it. Non-tolerance for bullshit. What, but what a thing to think for us, right? Because I think about when somebody, when that happens, the way a label or the way is something that even goes into neurolinguistic psychology and self-concept, impacts us that not being able to take that from one thinking in in the business of real estate there's all these of what a realtor is which is not real lovable and so in that people get into the role and they freeze up rather than remembering you're not a realtor it. or a real estate right. agent you're somebody right. getting it done the same way there's, you were behind the right. bar you know what i call it there's you know what the freeze is it's so funny we're talking about this jerry there is this freeze between letters and numbers and the letter is a W dash two. What you recognize is you're a 1099 and that nobody else is going to be paying you besides a buyer and a seller and a landlord and a tenant. You should be getting your ass to work chasing specifically those four people. Otherwise, you may want to skip and get the bartender. Well, maybe. and what a shame it is that That's that me, like but think but to your point, the irony is that it's the letters, the ten ninety nine, 
the working for yourself and getting your own clients that's going to bring you more certainty and more wealth and more abundance than any w2 if i'm getting them right because i'm horrible with taxes but being yeah. the remember covid people are getting laid off and in the meanwhile i remember yeah. i had like yeah. i don't think it was 15 contracts all over a million bucks I, like i've been here just i've been, them here. Out. been here and I'm, i thought I'm a whoa corporate. yeah i don't i'm a former so yeah i'm all over it, jerry i'm a former corporate yeah former mid-level management employee who I had just had this conversation yesterday with somebody who was asking me about it, who, who realized that at a certain point I needed to grow into the business world. And once I got into mid-level management, I was able to make decisions, sound good decisions, mistakes with no mistakes, right? Yeah. Uh, that I was capable of making decisions moving forward whether I mis made mistakes or no mistakes, right? But allowing myself to be in a situation to allow others who weren't making good decisions for me and my welfare mm -hmm. and my health and my financial well-being was going to come to an end sooner than later. Oh, that's powerful. And unfortunately... What we're seeing is agents that don't see that. They haven't been grinded out enough. And they have hit it, you need to hit rock bottom. For me, I'm I'm tough, right? I and at that point I wasn't. And I needed to just I needed to just bleed all over the place to realize how to recover, right? To yeah. realize that, you know, there is more to life than shenanigans and allowing others to give direction for me right mm -hmm. i can provide my own direction but i needed to do it intelligently with guidance and get the education and chase the changes and and, and evolve as things happen yeah. in the market today's number one agent was not a number one agent last year you know we're seeing agents evolve they're getting some of these recipes that are coming out. Maybe I missed a few recipes um, from from the last from the last market shift. As we're seeing things shift, you want to get those. I think, and everybody everybody has their secret sauce and dialing into that. All right, we've got two more questions, and these will be easier, faster. Let's I think. All right, book. If there is a book, one that you would name, does two twelve. It? Done. Two what twelve. Is it called? Oh yes. Uh, yep, one. What's the take? Give them the takeaway. Two yep. twelve. Yeah. What's the takeaway on 212? And we got the last question. Water 212 takeaway. At 212, not 211. Mm. See, you can boil all the you, you can you can try to boil water all the way up to 211. It it's doesn't start there. boiling until 212. One degree. So as an example, today's a great example. I'll leave you, I'll leave this. I'll leave it one with, with this in the book. But painters here, right? Painters are up there in the master bedroom when I got home from pickleball. And they didn't want to take the TV attachments to the wall off. They're like, no, we just paint around them. Mm -mm. I call bullshit. Because you know, I don't want them to do the paint job without doing all the paint job. Right? So I'm like, no, 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 no. I'll take the frames off for you. Right? And that's what I got to do as soon as I get off the call. And then I got to do that CZM yeah. class. So, um, so my point to you is literally I recognized the time frame I was on. And then I started boiling right i started getting into that 212 and getting shit done yep you want to get shit done it's just one degree you gotta move you all gotta right get, last, get last question i love it action just do it energy do it there my wife was wondering why are you the, running all over the house is everything okay yeah i got shit to do i man. love it i love it i can't wait to meet her okay last question Cause we could go on for an hour about that. So I'm gonna, I'm, I'm withholding the temptation. Here is the last question. If there is one thing, let's say we forget everything else from this conversation today. If there's one thing you hope yeah. everybody remembers and takes away, what is it? Breathe. Breathe. Breathe, yeah. What is today? If you can breathe, if you can get up 
and really breathe through your problems, right? Mm -hmm. Without giving the infliction of what you really want to give them. You just breathe through and really digest what's going on and make smart decisions. There's so many. So, and, and the, the point behind the breathe for me is there's more than one way to skin a cat, right? Jerry and I get in a fight. I immediately go after her and I'm, we're nasty, right? Or we have options, right? Jerry, I'm uncomfortable with where we're going. Maybe we should revisit here tomorrow and 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 rediscover where we were at, what what our goals are, right? Or another option would be, Jerry, I'm not talking to you ever again. So that was three different options there. And breathing first before gurgitating out is huge. Wow. Thank you. JK, Fort Lauderdale, South Florida, Team JK, one Sotheby's. You are a badass. You are awesome. Thank you. It was so Appreciate much fun. Appreciate you guys. Jerry, you rock. And 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 those that um, they're in alignment with Jerry, I mean, I can't pump her up enough. I can't push her high enough on a pedestal. Because when we were working um, on bringing her into the team and really inflicting um, what we needed on the team, and it was sales. My agents, they were getting their real estate license, and then they think they're professional salespeople. I'm like, you're not. <laughs> you need help. And Jerry and I were looking at our weaknesses and how we were going to be able to achieve those. And let me tell you, Jerry has brought it. I am. We're having fun. You're awesome. Like, wow. do it. Love it. JK, thank you. It's beautiful here in Fort Lauderdale. Any of you track my number, JK, 954-709-9742. can always call me, breakfast, coffee, lunch, dinner. I'll take you to an event. We'll take you to the beach, get you on the golf cart, get you And out don't miss on out on him, courts. guys. Take his oh, invitation. Yeah. If you play pickleball or take tennis, it. you better not take come down to Fort Lauderdale without calling me. Love it. You rock, JK. I'll see you soon.